This will be the 14th year that these seven early Saskatoonians have been portrayed on the side of Drinkle Number no. 3 building at 115 3rd Avenue North. So it is time to refresh our memories as to just who these men were, what they had in common, and why they particularly have been acknowledged in this column of portraits. Beginning from the top, J.C. Drinkle was formerly a menswear salesman in Ontario. He came to Saskatoon in 1903 to join F.E. Kerr in a real estate firm on First Avenue South. Rather than waiting for clients to come to him, Drinkle is known to have actively sought them out. In one case, he is said to have sold the firm's horses and wagon so he could buy the train tickets he needed to accompany some prospective settlers back to Minnesota. There he persuaded them and some of their neighbors to return and purchase land he had options on in the Davidson to Dundurn area. By 1909, Drinkle was earning enough from land sales to have this modern commercial block constructed at 21st Street and 2nd Avenue. One of his first tenants on the main floor was Great Western Furniture a company he had founded earlier. The newly established University of Saskatchewan leased the entire top floor for use as classrooms that fall. When this building burned in the 1920s, the present McMillan building was constructed on the remaining foundation. In 1912, Drinkle had Drinkle No. 2, a second commercial block constructed at 106 3rd Avenue North. It would be demolished following a major fire in the 1980s. In 1913, he undertook construction of the present Drinkle No. 3 building. It was supposed to be 10 stories high, but due to the onset of the recession that preceded the Great War, it was capped off at five. Next is Ellen Bowerman, a former Methodist minister and teacher from Ontario. He was appointed Saskatoon's postmaster in 1900. While so employed, Bowerman also served as a town councillor from 1903 to 1905 and was instrumental in the formation of a local board of trade in 1904. Realizing Saskatoon's economic potential early on, he purchased a number of then empty lots on both sides of 21st Street between 1st and 2nd Avenues. In 1907, he sold the northwest corner, that's left middle ground in this photo, to the government as a site for a new post office and the adjacent lot to James Klinkskill for a store. He then had the Bowerman block built on the middle lots. This building would be occupied by Caswell's menswear for many years and now houses Manhattan Casual. That same year, Bowerman had a summer home built for himself near the river, southwest of the city. This Bowerman house would be designated a protected municipal heritage property in 1986. In 1912-13, Bowerman had the still impressive eight-story Canada building erected on the southwest corner of 21st Street and 1st Avenue. At the time, it was touted as the first skyscraper west of Winnipeg. Next is Jimmy Flanagan, who came to Saskatoon from Ontario in 1902. A rather eccentric but generous individual, Flanagan worked first as a horse dealer and operated a livery stable like the one shown here. He switched to the hospitality industry in 1903 when he had the Western Hotel constructed at 156 2nd Avenue South. This hotel would be operated and renovated several times by a notable succession of owners before its demolition in 1962. In 1907, Flanagan had Flanagan House, a larger hotel with a distinctive cupola on the roof and a balcony over the entrance constructed at the corner of 21st Street and 3rd Avenue. It was from this balcony that one memorable evening in the spring of 1909, J. 
James Clayskill announced to a surrounding crowd that the provincial university would in fact be located at Saskatoon. That building minus the cupola is now the Senator Hotel. Next is Dr. John Willoughby, a medical graduate of the University of Toronto, who came to Saskatoon with the first temperance colonists in 1883. While ministering to the needs of his patients over the succeeding decade, Dr. Willoughby also proved up a homestead quarter on the hill about a, a mile west of Saskatoon's railway station. In 1903, he purchased the quarter of land immediately west of the railway, which he chose to subdivide rather than farm. He and his real estate partner, F.E. Blaine, then began selling the lots in what would be Riversdale. Following the typhoid epidemic of 1907, Dr. Willoughby sold his farmstead on the hill to the Grey Nuns, who in turn had the house enlarged to form St. Paul's Hospital. In 1913, this original St. Paul's Hospital was replaced on the same site with a larger, more substantial structure. That same year, Dr. Willoughby sold the remainder of his surrounding farm to another developer who, in turn, subdivided it into what is now the Pleasant Hill neighborhood. For several years, Dr. Willoughby held a majority share in the Phoenix newspaper and served as city alderman during the 1907-08 and 1910-11 term. Next is James R. Wilson, whose father had been ranching in the Dundurn area since the 1880s. In the 1890s, James Wilson and his partner, James Leslie, set up one of the first stores on First Avenue, that's left middle ground in this photo, opposite the railway station. In 1903, the two of them had a flour mill constructed north of the railway station, the first such industrial plant in Saskatoon and district. In 1910, they, along with other local investors, had a much larger Saskatoon milling company plant built on Avenue N South and 18th Street West. This plant, later sold to Quaker Oats, would be the cornerstone of the present West Industrial Area. James R. Wilson was a longtime member of the Exhibition Board. He was also mayor of the town of Saskatoon for the 1903-04 term, then mayor of the newly incorporated city of Saskatoon for the 1907-08 term. It was during this latter term as mayor that he personally guaranteed a bank loan needed to complete the city's first electrical and water plant shown here. This structure is still part of the present water treatment plant at Avenue H South and 11th Street West. Next is J.F. Cairns, a former teacher from Ontario, who James Wilson persuaded to set up a small bakery on 2nd Avenue in 1902. Cairns did well enough to have a larger one built two years later. In 1906, he opened an even larger department store that faced 2nd Avenue, now the coal block, with a grocery wing that faced onto 21st Street, which has been occupied by a number of different businesses, including the Taverna uh, restaurant shown here. In 1910, Karen sponsored the construction of a baseball field named in his honor, Kitty Corner from the CPR station on Avenue A North. It would be home field for a succession of semi-professional teams over the next 50 years. When Avenue A was widened to form Idlewild Drive in the 1960s, Karen's Field was relocated to the Holiday Park Recreational Area, then on the southwest edge of the city. In 1912, Karen's had his crown jewel, a five-story J.F. Karen's department store constructed at 2nd Avenue and 23rd Street. It would be sold to the Hudson's Bay Company in the 1920s. That site is now occupied by the 2nd Avenue lofts. Last 
But not least is James Klingskill, a former Battleford storekeeper who with his family moved to Saskatoon in 1899, where he had purchased the former Wilson and Leslie store on First Avenue. In 1907, Klingskill had a larger store built on the 21st Street site he had obtained from Ellen Bowerman. This building would subsequently house a number of businesses, including the Ritz Hotel shown here, before being demolished in 1987. However, its original name remains embedded in the concrete sidewalk in front of where it stood. Klingskill's large white house on Spadina Crescent East remained a Saskatoon landmark until its demolition in 1960. From its porch, he and his family had watched the original traffic bridge being completed in 1907, and during the June flood of 1908, saw the steamboat City of Medicine Hat sink after becoming lodged against the bridge's southernmost pier. James Klingskill had represented Saskatoon and District in the Territorial Council from 1902 to 1905 and was then Saskatoon's mayor when it became a city in 1906. He also led the delegation shown here that in 1909 persuaded the new provincial government of Saskatchewan to locate its university at Saskatoon. Hence, the early Saskatoonians portrayed on this wall were noted local business associates, entrepreneurs, and civic leaders at the turn of the 20th century. They are being thus acknowledged for the pivotal roles they played in Saskatoon's development during its formative years, as well as for their contributions to its built heritage. More information on these and other early residents of Saskatoon are available in the local history room of the public library.